as a dietitian or as just like a regular guy who likes food, I get so frustrated when I want to look up fruit carbohydrates and I keep getting low carb fruit for keto diet. Uh, these are the fruits you can have for your animal based diet. And then they have these like just super overcomplicated. Oh my goodness. And, and, the, and then you get, you get more of the culinary ones and all of them are good and all of them have their place for the specific customer but for the guy who just loves food and is interested in like the fruit aspect of applying it in multiple areas like yes I like fruit like like I, I want to eat this as is and I want to know how many carbs are in this but then when I turn around and I go to work out and I'm wanting like 20 grams of carbs for like an inter-workout thing, I want that to be easy. And when I go then again, and I have this like rabbit hole that I'm going down and I'm making an apricot soda, I want, and I need 7% carbohydrates in my solution. I want to know how many grams of carbohydrates are in my fruit. And so I need a guide. Uh, because I got so tired of needing so many different guides or carbohydrate things that are made by these like that are made by these people in the communities that have they have good intentions in it and they're really important. But I've taken that carbohydrate guide and I have sectioned them off into their botanical sense. And so when you go into this guide and you look up stone fruit or you look up berries or you look up nightshades, or you look up uh, citrus fruits, you're going to see which foods are low carbohydrate, which foods are uh, line up with seasonality because your families and groups of fruit are going to grow with the seasons. Yes, your squashes are going to be part of the berry family and they're gonna have more year round seasonality, but fruits, Carbohydrates from fruit in the botanical sense makes it super easy for me. Also, like as a dietitian, if I have someone coming up to me being like, Matt, I'm on a low carb diet, what do I do? And I say, here's this fruit as, as a botanical guide. And here is what you can see and learn or, you know, just use the guide as is. And you don't have to like bend over backwards to try to learn about like which which specific memorization thing do you need to do to memorize which fruits are low in carbohydrates? Like, it's just the berry section. It's not even that hard. And, you know, it's more visible through this type of guide when it's suctioned off the fruits into their botanical sense. Like, that makes, that, that makes so much sense. And, and, well, I'm sharing this because I'm sure I'm not the only one that has had this frustration and it'll be available on my website. But, I just want there to be an easier way about communicating the carbohydrates from fruit and have a wide variety of people be able to take this one guide and apply it to their specific situation. You know, uh, someone on an animal-based diet can take this guide and apply it to their animal-based diet preferences or someone that's on a low-carb diet or someone that's on a true ketogenic diet, they could take this. Or someone that is like an athlete and they're like, okay, if I need X amount of carbs before my race, I should have, and they don't have to like do these really complicated calculations. They can just go to like, okay, I need 30 grams and I have like a banana and I have like an apple juice. What can I do? You know, how much do I need in order to do this? Or, or then maybe even like the pastry chef who says, I'm going to make a clafouti. I'm going to make this cherry based dessert. I know my, the, the nutrition information on the flour is easy and accessible and same thing for the milk. But when I go and I buy cherries, they don't come with a nutrition label. And so what are the carbs I'm getting from my cherries? I like this guide because it just makes fruit as 
excuse the pun, but it makes fruit, the carbohydrates from fruit, it breaks it up into bite-sized pieces and it makes it applicable to everyone that's trying to be interested in what fruit is and the carbohydrates that it comes from and it turns it into this practical guide. So also what I did is I made sure that, so the 100 grams, so, so the 100 grams is technically a representation of the fruit's makeup in percentage. If I have 100 grams of apricot, I'm going to see that that's 7 grams or 7% carbohydrates, 86 grams of water, and 2 grams of fiber, or 7% carbs, 86% in water, and 2% in fibers. And so it gives you this like pie chart breakdown of the fruit so you comprehend better what the fruit is made up of. And then next to it, I added in the average weight of one specific fruit. And then next to it, I added in the amount, the average quantity of carbohydrates you can expect from one fruit because a melon is going to weigh a lot more than an apricot. And maybe you have just one apple and maybe an apple isn't just a hundred grams and usually it's not. And so, what this does is it gives you this like awesome guide that's applicable in so many areas because it, it tells you the percentage breakdown of how of a fruit's makeup and it gives you the real life application of when I eat this one banana, when I eat this one apple, or when I go and I have some pineapple, how much am I usually going to be getting? If I split a pineapple up into, you know, fours, because that's a lot of fruit. Or maybe if you split up a melon into fours and you say, well, usually a melon has a lot, it's gonna have a lot of carbohydrates, but you split it up into four because that's easy to do and no one's, and I'm very, I literally work in the nutrition field and I can't stand, <laughs> I'm showing my hand. Uh, I can't stand using a food scale and will not use it if I don't need to. And so if I, if I buy a melon and I cut it up into fours, well, I can just take the carb content from that one whole thing and just divide by four and that's what I'm gonna get, you, you know, and I get an idea, but I like, I like how practical this is in a real life application, but then when you want to dive deeper into like fruit composition and makeup and you want to do something maybe a little bit more fermentation wise and you want to make an apricot soda, you have, you can use the same guide or maybe you're on an animal-based diet and you want to use, and you want to say, I need a lot of carbs because I'm working out, but I want to you know, have my proteins for my animal foods and I want to have my carbs for my fruits. And you apply that to, and you can use this guide to say, okay, here's, I have to just, and then you just fill in the blank. And that makes it more approachable. And same thing for like a keto diet. You know, a keto diet, if you're gonna do like under 50 grams of carbs per day, you can pick and choose your preferred fruits and you can say, well, you know, I can have either a lot of a lot of blueberries and maybe I don't want that sheer quantity of blueberries, or I could have like, uh, you know, a, a couple a couple apricots. And that's kind of the same thing because I do feel like, and so here I am on a tangent because, you know, I did the keto diet. I, uh, I'm really good at the keto diet. I did the keto diet and I found myself feeling stuck in regards to carb counting and not understanding specifically, like feeling stuck that like everyone said, you, you can only have berries, but then you go into the berry section and, and I would say, you know, maybe I don't want to have a berry, but I want to have like, it's fall time and there's like a Granny Smith and I'm only, and if I'm only having like one per day, maybe I can allow myself to have that one per day and still have it be applicable. So I'm going to be even more niche, but like, because I like to make homemade sodas and I need to have this like, uh, ginger bug to help me make, well, both soda, but then beer, but then wine, and then vinegar, and then having these ferments available, there's going to need to be this like active bug 
that can ferment my beautiful fruit juice into a soda or alcohol or whatever I'm making. And when I'm making a ginger bug, I know for a fact, and you can look this up online, but you're going to want to have about like between like a 10 to 20% sugar solution to wake up those yeast and get that ginger bug really bubbly. And what I noticed, which is really cool, is that instead of just doing ginger plus sugar, I can just throw my chopped up ginger literally in apple juice and it will make a ginger bug. <laughs> just stir it every night. That's literally, literally that is it. It is not hard. It is, it is not hard. And so what, and, and so I like that tip because it makes making a ginger bug really easy and you don't need to add sugar to it every day. So that is that is my side super niche note. But in any case, uh, this is my fruit, carbohydrates from fruit with a botanical twist guide. And I really hope that this is useful for the first week. Uh, this will be absolutely free. And if you do want to pay for it because you like the value of what I'm providing, uh, feel free to pay for it on Etsy. I'll make that one full price and that way you can support me in what I'm doing. And uh, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. If you have comments about, if you have suggestions, about the carbohydrate fruit guide, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. And I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. You can find me, Matthew Kress, on my website at crestdietetics.com, where you can also find a link to this specific carbohydrates from fruit guide, link in the description below. And I wanna thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.